All right, everybody. <laughs> it's just some quick shit. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Turn up, all right? My shit. <laughs> For all you dick riding motherfuckers, this is the perfect subject. Okay? Um, so, first of all, pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm sure some of y'all have heard about this uh, Drake's uh, tool is on the internet And, uh, you know, people are commenting on and all this shit, right? <laughs> I had to make a video about this I know this might sound trivial, but it's actually pretty interesting to me um, So, the reason I'm actually making videos is to talk about how rap essentially has become visual Okay, so rap was always visual, without a doubt I think seeing rap helps you understand what rap is without a doubt but the difference between this era or not just this era but really as hip-hop has progressed and became more and more mainstream um people realize in the record industry that it's all about visuals people want the visuals they don't really care about the music they just want the visuals and this is really the case actually with all the art forms uh, but it's def i would say especially so in hip-hop uh, because hip-hop was new and uh, the visuals were so appealing. I mean, you have to remember, right? The stuff that Hype Williams and some of these video directors were doing, whether it just even be in terms of like uh, camera effects and uh, showcasing people in the hood and the girls and the cars, like this is some new shit. People haven't, like you can't go back in history and look at videos from other genres and then be like, oh yeah, that's exactly like this rap video. Rap videos did some new shit. They pushed the boundaries of expression, especially when it comes to showcasing drugs and sex and stuff. And obviously that's a recipe for something that a casual mainstream audience would buy into heavily. And I'm not, again, I'm not mad at people necessarily, you know, selling sex and drugs to a certain extent, you know what I mean? In the sense that, I mean, human beings are sexual, human beings are looking to get high on various things. I don't do drugs personally, but you know, for everyone, you know, Again, as long as you're not harming people necessarily, I mean, that's a whole different conversation. But my point is that I'm a big fan of letting human beings uh, celebrate their impulses as long as they are not um, harming others, right? I mean, ultimately, if it's all about consent and doing things in a way that are responsible. So my point is this, right? These are basic human impulses that people have, um, or at least some people have, especially when it comes to drugs. So I'm not surprised that hip hop obviously became very visually powerful for people who wanted to see that kind of shit. But the point is that the music is the underpinning of all that, sh right? All the stuff that made hip hop cool is the music. When I got into rap, I didn't know what most of the rappers I listened to look like. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I was in Saudi Arabia. I wasn't getting MTV like that. It, cut, it took a couple of years. I would say it's not until the late 90s, really, that I started to even get, like, um, even MTV or just... I remember watching this Italian channel that would show, um, like, random hip-hop videos. I remember seeing Shaheen Shaolin style when it came out. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I, I started to see videos and... You would see rappers and you'd be like, oh yeah, that's interesting. That person looks how they rap. But the point is I got into hip hop the old school way into like literally the music. I either liked it or I didn't like it. And as hip hop has progressed, the budgets of the videos became huge and it became the celebration of imagery and the power of imagery. So much so that we have whack niggas now um, over the last 20 years in particular who literally cannot rap. You know, it's interesting because, you know, to me, I look at the 99% of people who are rapping over the last 20 years to me can't even rap. That's how bad it is. I mean, I know a lot of people were so used to the bottom barrel of nature of how things are. So I don't expect the average person to notice. But to me, I'm like, this person cannot even rap, right? They don't have the voice to rap and they certainly don't have the production or the bars, right? But my point is that when shit is visual, it doesn't really matter because you can look at someone and say, oh, I like the way that person looks. I'm going to buy their CD or I'm going you know, to stream their shit. I mean, it's so easy now. I'm going to follow their content because they're cute. They, they look like me, right? I, I'm a dweeb at home. So like I, I relate to a dweeb on the camera, right? <laughs> that kind of shit. And that's where hip hop has gone. It's so bad to me that now an artist can't even drop the song itself without accompanying it, you know, with a new video. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. I knew it was going to come to this, but obviously we've seen this over the last five to 10 years, even where anytime an artist like Schoolboy Q just dropped uh, two new songs that 
frankly, I don't even remember. And I saw the videos and all that um, just today. I don't even remember the damn songs. But my point is that you have to drop music videos with your music now. Like you can't just drop music on its own because if you drop music on its own, you're forcing the listener to actually listen to it on some level. And they'll decide and, and they'll notice, ah, this probably doesn't really have as much energy or it's probably not very good. But you throw in the visuals with somebody doing this shit or whatever with hoes in the corner and you puffing on some la or whatever. And now all of a sudden you've, you know, you to so people who look for that kind of imagery and want that kind of imagery, they're going, oh, yeah, this this is cool. Right. Um, I mean, of course, there are people who will notice, like myself, that the song is still whack. But a lot of people don't really think about it. As long as they can, you know, see what the person is doing, they're into it. And so, as I use that as a preamble, I'm getting to the point about Drizzy. Now that you've seen Drizzy's tool, pause, <laughs> what do you think about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you know, when I think about it in my notes and I'm, I'm looking at this shit, right? Now that Drizzy has shown that, the, you know, his, his, he's got a sizable tool or whatever... Right? <laughs> Does Drake have a classic now? Right? <laughs> is Take Care a five mic album all of a sudden? Right? <laughs> Niggas is dick riders. Like, let's be real here. Right? <laughs> the, is, if you're reading this, it's too late. Is this now a five mic album? Right? Is your perception of Drizzy changed now that you know that he has BDE? Right? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> or is it the reverse? Right? Is he the Jewish devil incarnate? Right? Do you hate Drizzy even more? And you're like, fuck this nigga, man. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Fuck this half breed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how is he running the game? And he's also got this tool and he's smashing all my bitch, this Canadian. Fuck this Canadian nigga who's coming through and, and you know, taking all the hoes. I mean, we know that that's why some of these niggas is jealous. Come on, man. <laughs> we know this, right? We've been knowing this. So my point is, does your perception of Drake change? Are you listening to Drake differently now, now that you know that the tool is out? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section. Peace.